welcome to Tigers, Tigers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, back for another episode. Uh, myself, Luke Flanagan, and Rich Walker is my co-host. Uh, Hello. Stuart Green is our guest today. So lots of questions, I'm sure, that we uh, want to get through with this one. So this should be quite interesting. I know Rich has an awful lot of questions written down that he's going to go through. So, so, so many. many. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be. It's gonna be like his first job interview. The yeah, grilling is gonna get grilling. proper, massive barbecue <laughs> outside, suns out style grilling. Frosty Indoor. Nixon. What a reference! <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so, without further ado, welcome Stuart Green. Hi, Stu. Hi, mate. You're all right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Rich, Rich is here, co-host. Hi, hey, Stuart. Are you all right, mate? I'm good, thanks, Rich. Good. Thank you for having me on. Oh, thank, I know. Thank you for doing it. Thanks for being on. Um, got a f- there's a few uh, few players that, that Brendan's been messaging for us as a go-between, so I'm grateful to him as well. Um, he's a lovely lad, Brendan. I've known Brendan a long time. Yeah, he's, um, he, he keeps. Uh, I think he keeps close with a lot of players. They all, all speak really highly of him. So. He was he was like he was quite close to us, um, and and you almost at times right after the game, or or right after tr- you uh, you you wanted to help him out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a genuine guy, isn't he? So yeah, um, yeah. He's doing a lot of work, kind of that I tried to do myself in the early stages of the podcast, trying to reach out to players and had very little luck, but some luck, but not not that much, and he. Right. Messaged me and said, "Oh, don't worry. Well, there's a lot of players who want to speak to. I'll speak to them. Don't worry." So, um, yeah, definitely it's been a lifeline for us. So, again, thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, we just kind of want to talk about your early career and then joining City and then kind of going through your time here, if 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 that's all right. Um, yeah, I went, it was re- really good of you to give up your time. So, you know, whenever you need to go, just tell us. Um, no worries, pal. I've, I've been, listen. I've got nothing to do. I'm stuck in the house. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that bodes well because both of us, me and Rich, have followed City all our lives. So we have tons of uh, questions for everybody. So however long it lasts, either. however long it lasts is good with us. But obviously, when you when you start to get knackered and bored of us asking questions, just give them a check. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to Rich Walker. He usually does the first question. We're going to keep it like that as it's gone well so far. So Rich, floor's yours, mate. <laughs> Takes the pressure off you, it doesn't does it? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, just to kick off, Stuart, the first thing that I was really interested in, um, and we spoke to Laurie Dudfield and Rodney Rowe about what their early days of their career were like. Um, you were a youth player at Newcastle, and I just wondered what that was like. What's it like to come up as a as a young lad at such a massive football club? It was a dream come true, really. Um, Newcastle was a club very much on the up um terrific managers terrific club when when people when people talk about how big it is and how potentially big it is that they're, they're kind of not not leading you up up the garden path it's a huge club um for me as a kid to join them and start my journey there was almost perfect really and and obviously the coaching that i received was was top draw um and and you know it wasn't easy because you've just got to keep improving, and and I was lucky enough that I did keep improving, um, and managed to get some great years there. You know, yeah. Was it because were you under Bobby Robson at one point? Was that the first team manager would have been Bobby Robson? Wasn't it? I was. I, I signed when I first signed as a as a as a kid. It was Kevin Keegan, right? Um, and then when I was an apprentice, it was Kenny Dalglish. You're um, learning off proper masters, aren't you? Really, <laughs> un- 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 all very different, yeah. But incredible, incredible managers and coaches and people, um, and and then Kenny Kenny Dalglish left, and um, Rude Hullock came in, mm. and and Rude was Rude was very very much for for the younger the younger lads, and and I was obviously one of them, yeah. And he he thought he thought a lot of me, and and had me in the squad, and. And on the bench, and um, he he put a lot of he put a lot of trust in the young ones. Whether it we it, it wasn't right really because he, he kept some superstars out the squad, mm-hmm. um, 
And then he fell, course, out big, he fell out big time with Alan Shearer, didn't he? Over you know marginalising him a little bit in the squad. Well, he did. He he wanted um, he wanted young lads, and he thought he thought they were finished. And and uh, <laughs> when I was on the I was on the bench one night with with Alan Shearer, Duncan Ferguson, Steve Harper, and Aaron Hughes, and, <laughs> yeah, and on the field, what a bench that I know, is. and on the pitch was like Paul Robinson. No disrespect to Paul, lovely lad. But like you're talking about superstars on the bench, mm. and and a young lad, twenty twenty one who who hasn't scored a goal, playing in front in a huge local derby against Sunderland with fifty two thousand. So he he got it he got it massively wrong. Rude Hullard, although he was like he was a sensational player even still in training, mm. um, he got it wrong at Newcastle, and I think he'll, he'd probably admit that now. And and then and then Bobby Robson came in. And um, and he kind of got the love back for the club and and started playing players who should be playing. And still, me as a young kid, I, w- I was still in the squad, and and uh, and he had a good look at me personally, and and within a couple of weeks, give me a four and a half year contract. Um, I can't, I can't say better than that. Can you? T- to be honest with you, people ask me about the highlights of my career and life, if you like. Yeah. And that's got to be. That's. I mean. I'm sure you'll touch on it later on. People ask me about my whole whole city highlight, mm. and I've got one. But but that's got to, that's huge, you know. Somebody like him mm. giving me a young lad from Whitehaven in Cumbria a four and a half year professional contract. Yeah, he's he's managed he's, Barcelona. Great stuff that he's done. He's given you a contract. That's big, it's massive claim to fame. That. Isn't it? It, it was huge, and you know, he, he, the, this typifies Bobby Robson because he didn't just give me the contract; he, he cared. Yeah, he cared so much. And I remember my agent rang me and he said, "Listen, it's a three and a half year deal." And I said, "Great, no problem." Yeah, and he said, "My agent said I'm flying up from London. I'm going to do the deal while you're training, and then we'll meet in Newcastle and we'll talk over it." So I went and met him, and and Bobby Robson got me in on the Monday, and he said, "Listen, son." Your agent's got you a three and a half year deal, and I said, "Yeah, yeah." And he said, "No, I, I want to give you four and a half year, son." <laughs> and and I was just like, "Bobby Robson, he's caring about me when he's got a huge squad and a huge game in a couple of days' time, and he's more worried about securing my future." Mm. But that that just summed up what he was like. So I signed a four and a half year deal with Bobby Robson, and and it, like I say, it was it was a huge dream come true, you know. Because obviously you had we had a couple of you were still at the club originally when you were you went on your loan spells went to Carlisle didn't you to start with um, that was your first big loan move I think mm. um, and then you went to Hull the next season so you signed initially on a season long didn't you when Ian Mulby was there so obviously yeah. that's the start of your city time what was that like kind of change did you still think there was a future at Newcastle at, at that time when you came on loan? I, when I first when I first went when I first went to Carlisle. Mm. I, I had to beg him to let me go on loan because I wasn't getting anywhere near the first team, yeah. and I was I was I was too probably too good for reserve team football then. But then I, I had my successful spell at Carlisle, and that's when Jan Morby seen me play. Yeah, um, I played because you, you played at Bowfrey Park, didn't you? I did. We I, I think we won that night. Or, or did we draw? I think I can't remember, but it was a we did tight game. Yeah, we didn't win. <laughs> we never knew. It yeah, that we then signed. Impressed when I signed them, you've always made an impression. Whoever it was, Fagan was like that last week with Colchester, and obviously when you got, oh, he was unbelievable. Yeah. He was unbelievable against us, Craig. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but I remember that night. I remember, I think Brian Little was the manager, and I remember being playing for Carlisle, thinking I could I could play for Hull, and I remember how poor the team was. Um, and because we we weren't great, Carla, we were we were awful at times. But I remember the size of Hull. Yeah, thinking they've got to be better than that, you know. <laughs> and then when then when Jan Mo, my agent rang me, he said, "Listen, Jan Morby's desperate to take you there." And I said, "Right, we're going," you know. So I, I went into, I knocked on um, Bobby Bobby Robson's office and said, "Listen, Gaffer, I, I've played at Hull and I, I'm desperate to go." And he said, "Listen, son, there'll be other clubs in for you." Um, higher up the divisions, I said no. I said I I, I want to go there, you know. And he said right, I'll let you go. I'll let you go for the season, but we can call you back after six months. I think it was something like that. So yeah. Recon- yeah, I was, yeah. 
I was like driving down the hall, absolutely delighted. And, and obviously um, it was Boothry Park and I met Jan Morby and then met Adam Pearson and we went down to the new ground and, 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 and they didn't really need to sell it because I was more than happy with Boothry Park. Yeah. Please. I absolutely, I preferred Booth. Stri- honestly, I prefer Boothry Park. I still miss, I know Rich will be the same, I still miss the atmosphere of Boothry Park. It was, it was incredible, the pitch, everything yeah. about it. I, I probably played my, may, maybe, attacking wise, played my best football at Boothry Park. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it, 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 the club, I just wanted to join the club and it was a season long loan, but I was already thinking longer than that, you know. Yeah. Were you even at that stage? You had, you had your eyes on a permanent move. Oh, absolutely! I, I I remember the chairman Adam Pearson got me a flat in Beverly, which was great. They they done everything to make me happy, and I thought this is this is a place where I want to be. And mm. and and Jan was obviously keen um, to make it happen, but there was obviously still in the back of my mind thinking Newcastle's such a wonderful club, and I loved living there. So I was a little bit thinking, well, if it happens at Hull, I'll go. But if it doesn't... At least you've still got the, yeah, the, the fallback of being Newcastle. I'm, you can have another chance. Yeah, still, still like I'm at, I'm at one of the best clubs in the world, you know, and yeah. I still had two years left on my deal. So it was a win-win situation for me. Yeah. Yeah, something like that's not something that you leave, you know, in a hurry, is it? You don't make that sort of decision in, in haste. No, definitely not. And... And and I must admit, um, when Jan Morby got sacked, I was devastated because obviously I was still quite young and and I'd never had, I'd never proper played for someone that had been sacked. So he was my first manager that got sacked. So I was I was devastated because he was good for me because he was a midfielder. He was so attack minded, and he 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 just wanted me to go forward, which obviously suited me. Um, mm. So I was devastated he went, um, but then you quickly have to get your head round it, and and you know that the next week there's a manager in the crowd, and you and, and you've just got to get on with it, you know. So obviously the next manager to come in after Billy Russell's been been in there was was Peter Taylor. So when Peter took over, I, I, what were your what were your thoughts? Well. For probably one of my best games was for Billy Russell. Billy Russell had <laughs> Billy had us for that Saturday, and we absolutely yeah. hammered. I think it was Rochdale, and I think I yeah. think Pete was yeah. in the crowd then. And and Pete yeah. after that game, watching that game, he he kind of instructed that, that he wanted the permanent deal to happen there and then. Um, and he pulled me the week later and said, "Listen, we're trying to get the deal done. Are you happy?" I said, "Yeah, I love the club and." Um, I didn't really know him then, um, and then they, that's when I think Adam and Newcastle started talking about a fee and 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 trying to agree something where where I, I came I came permanent Hull, you know, uh, but I yeah. didn't really know Pete at that time. But that's that's huge for you, isn't it? New manager comes in and you know one game and he's he's already thinking I'd like this lad to be part of my my plans for this football club. He did. He watched the game on the Saturday, and on the Monday he come right to me in the morning and he said, um, "Are you happy?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah." And he said, "I've told the chairman to get on to it to make the deal permanent as, as soon as we can." And I was, I, I didn't even, I didn't even know him, and, and he was, he was, he was kind <laughs> of already doing that. But I played really well that game. Um, I, I, I remember that game really well, and I, and, and and obviously I played really well. Um, so that so he wanted to get the ball rolling quickly, you know. Yeah. Um, just, go on, go on, Rich. Thank you. Very much. I was I was just looking a bit further down the line that season, then Stuart, because it was the the last one at Boothry Park. You know, you were lucky enough to play on on that beautiful pitch for half a season. You said it was your favourite ground of the two that you played at. You know, home grounds for City. Could you could you give us an insight into what it was like to play at Boothry Park and, and maybe what it was like to play in the last match there? Um, I should have scored in the last match. It was a it was a <laughs> it, there was a, there was lords there and 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 Darling, Darling it, was, it was it was Darlington. Darlington, yeah. Darlington weren't a bad side and they're coming frustrated us um, and I should have scored um, and and I, I played all right but um, Boothry Park the pitch. I, I, I think it was probably the fans. I think the fans 
took to me straight away um and i kind of took to them and and it as a football player it doesn't half help if the fans like you i've i've experienced where some of my friends i've played with and they've got on the back and and it affects the life through the week it affects them at home and and i kind of got that special relationship with the fans early on um and i and and i looked forward so much to three o'clock on a saturday to to kind of perform in front of them um and and it was just i i just loved everything about Boothbury park yeah, cuz you you'd have experienced what it was like maybe on the other side of that at the time you know you say you had that great relationship with the fans but there was a, a lad that came in at the same time who maybe had the other side of it was um, Damien mm-hmm. Delaney and i seem to remember that you know at the start of his spell he didn't have um the easiest to ride from City fans, so you'd have seen the two of it. There was a few players that we did that with because it was there was there was him and Mike Edwards. Always people used to get on his back. I always thought, yeah, it's it, it's always been something yeah. that we've done. I think we've always had somebody. I'll tell you what, I don't like it. I'll but tell it's... you what, with Damien, Damien, Damien um, moved into my flat with me because obviously we signed him and um, and Pete asked if he could come and live with me, and I said, yeah, no problem. So he moved with me. Damien used to read the message boards. Um, yeah, did he? And and he and it would make him worse. And I used to say to him, you, you know, you, you kind of need to stop stop reading them. Yeah, that's um, going to affect and, you more. And it's like, suppose it's like checking your your inbox if you're a footballer, isn't it? People sending you shit yeah. messages and and all of that sort of stuff. And and I think I think with Damien, I think Pete was playing him left back. Mm. So there's nothing worse if you're a left back getting the ball out your feet, and 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 some of the some of the paddock beside you are, are waiting for you to make a mistake, and you go to clip one down the line. Yes, go for and, it. Yeah. And and it doesn't work out for you. So Damien spent a lot of time, if I can remember, reading them message boards, um, and I, I I remember saying to him, you need to stop doing that. You know, you need to click out of that, you, you're working hard, it, you know, it'll come. And he said, it's all right for you, they love you. Mm. And and um, <laughs> it's quite funny, really, but but that's what that's what it can do to you. It can, uh, but fair play to him because, boy, did he turn it round, because what a, what a player he ended up. Yeah. Yeah. What a career. Yeah. 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 I remember that one. It was the, the, you'll remember, Rich, yeah. you remember things better than me, that one goal where he went the full length of the pitch and scored a 1-0 win. That was a little bit... I think there was a couple. There was a couple of them he scored like well, that. Was one Peter? I think, right? it, um... I, I, uh, I think one can't... of them might have been in League Two. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't remember the other. I think they're both. Were. He just like there powered, was, from, um, powered from, the, from his own half, got the ball back from somebody like one two, and ended up scoring like a, a length of the length of the pitch goal. It was brilliant, but yeah. And... One of them was definitely yeah. Bristol Rovers yeah. last game of yeah. that season. Yeah, um, he, um, he he just wanted to be he just wanted to be loved yeah. by the supporters, <laughs> yeah. and and we did love him. The players knew. Yeah, us players knew that he was going to be a good player. Mm. Peter Taylor signed him, and Pete knew what he was. He was an athlete. He was big. He was strong. He could head it. He could he could play, but he just needed to mature a little bit, and and to win. To win all them fans over, fair play to him because I, I, I had them where 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 they liked me from day one. I, I don't know what I would have done if they didn't like me from day one. You know. Yeah. That that yeah. that must have been really hard for him. Like you, you obviously you two rooming together, and everyone's screaming Stuart Green, Stuart Green, everything else on the on the on the uh, on the weekend, and then he's as soon as yeah, as he says as soon as he makes a cock up pass, I was like, oh for fuck's sake, Damien. Fuck's sake, Delaney! It he, must it must be soul destroying to be in that position. But and 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 at one point it was like it was every week. Yeah, and he yeah. and he was getting yeah. he was getting home and he was down and I would say, "Come on, we're going out," and we'd go out and have a few drinks and and it would really really get him down. Um, I mean that that's he, that's it. That's in a in a period where mental health wasn't really spoke about, was it? No, that, that must no. have been like really dark days for him. I, I I think. I think I, I wouldn't say really dark, but I would say it did it. It did affect him. Yeah. But but 
you've got to help yourself and oh, you've yeah. just got to stay you, you've got to you've got to stay off them message boards you know yeah because... it's, it's better off not knowing what people say and concentrating on what you can do isn't it rather than what yeah, somebody else you, says you, i've never been one to go on them because yeah I, I, if nine fans <laughs> say, oh, Green, he had a good game, there's always one to say, but he done that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I don't, <laughs> I, I've never been one to, to kind of look on them, you know. Yeah. Um, I perhaps should have at times. But, um, <laughs> no, you probably but, you know, I, um, I, I kept, I've always, I always kept away from that, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, you, you scored on the, the first league game at KC as well. So you've gone, you've had a, a game where you said, oh, you felt you could have done better and the team could have done better last game at Boothbury. And then you've scored on first league game as well, haven't you? So what, what, was, what did that feel like, that new first game at the KC? That was such a special day for me because I, um, I signed my contract. Um, you were on the pitch, weren't you, signing the contract before that, kick-off, that if I remember right? That was an interesting right. one because they wanted to do a... They wanted to do a big thing. Adam, Adam wanted to do a big thing on the pitch because um, obviously they'd been trying to agree a fee with Newcastle, and they finally did. And I agreed the contract, but Peter Taylor, Peter didn't want to want to do it. Peter was like, "No, I, I don't want him getting any more limelight." And, <laughs> um, no, that's, uh, honestly, that's try and keep him grounded. Yeah, there, there was times where he used to say to the press, "I don't want you talking to Greeny." And they'd be like, "Why? Because he talk, he's he's getting too much. Use the other players as well." So it it kind of annoyed me a little bit mm. because I was desperate. I was desperate for something big. Yeah. To be to be on on the pitch before that. I knew it was going to be a sellout. My wonderful mum had come down with me on Christmas Day, and and my mum was like, was like so proud and and you know she was my best friend and 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 I desperately wanted. To make a show of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he he just kind of said, "Do it quickly. Go on there." And and he didn't like. He didn't want any. He didn't want me getting any more limelight. Um, which which I didn't really. I, I don't. I didn't like that. You know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I I think I went on the pitch for maybe a minute and waved and, to the crowd and shook hands and all that. Yeah, but but I think I think if I can remember, Adam. Adam wanted to get a table out, and <laughs> oh no, he, 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 was, he, was, he was the marquee <laughs> signing, wasn't he? It's a big statement signing some young wonder kid from Newcastle, isn't it? That's impressive. Already. He was Adam was all for kind of fans and mm. and what what it'll look like, and and I think Adam wanted to get the table out and and do it properly, yeah. and um, and Pete was like, no, nah, no, nah, he, <laughs> he gets too he gets too much limelight. Yeah. I don't want him getting any more. Jog on back to the changing rooms. <laughs> He, he was, he, yeah. he, he was, he, he was like, you could, he, he frustrated you at times with, with things like that, you know, because for me personally, I might have been a little bit flashback then, but it would have <laughs> only helped, it, it, it would have only made me more confident, you know, yeah. but putting a dampener on a 21 year old kid, it, it kind of puts you into your shell a little bit, you know. Mm. I suppose you, you feel a bit sort of pissed off about that when, you know, you, it, as you say, it's your moment, isn't it? And he's like, nah, 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 just let's not make a big thing of it. On it, it was weeks before, like that I would the the press would come up and um and and say we're not allowed to talk to you today, and I'd be like, why? <laughs> what do you mean? You know, I, I would be I would be walking out the ground with two champagne bottles, man of the match, yeah. and they'd be like, we're not allowed to talk to you. So they'd talk to like a board and right back or something, you know. <laughs> And and he is me. He is me with two champagne bottles. Man of the match, and won, the, yeah. won the game, and 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 he had to press had to talk to like one of the fullbacks or because he person. didn't want me. He didn't want me getting any more limelight. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Do you think? I mean, eventually you would, you know, not that long later, um, have mm. a bit of a bust up with um, Peter Taylor and. and Moved to Carlisle on loan. Do you think that that's maybe where it originated from? Kind of, did you feel a little bit insecure about your place in the squad at that time? Do you think? Um, I'll tell you what. What that was, we we played South End away, and um, and we couldn't train because it was snowing, it was frosty. So we drove down, and none of us had trained on the Friday. Now, as a footballer, you get so much. You live by routine, yeah, and 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 it's crazy because I'm 38 and I still live by routine now. <laughs> it, it, it's mental how you 
you live your life by routine. So we didn't train on the Friday. Drove all the way down to South End. Started the game. We were awful. I was awful. Um, he made some changes. He, I think he dropped um, Muzzy in goal. Mm. Brought in Alan Fettis. He dropped Big John Anderson. I, I, he made something like that. So we were a bit like, "What's what's he done this for?" You know. Um, but we were absolutely yeah. atrocious, and I was. I was like on the right midfield, and I was so lethargic. Um, partly because we hadn't trained on the Friday, and another part was probably was it. I just my performance just wasn't good enough. So he he it was it was crazy because I was used to taking plenty of hammerings being in Newcastle youth team and Newcastle reserve team. We used to get hammered every day as kids and Jan Moby had a go at me a few times, Peter Taylor. I wasn't, I had found no problem with managers having a go at me. Mm. Um, but he, he got me in on the Monday and, and he kind of put all the blame for the performance on myself. <laughs> and I was like, and I said, listen, I, I've had a bad game, you know. I And he said, no, you weren't trying. And I said, listen, I was trying it. I've just had a bad day. And he said, no, that's unacceptable. You're training on your own. So I was a bit like, training on my own? Um, so I thought, that's a bit harsh. And he said, your performance um, your performance was totally unacceptable. And you're training on your own this week. So I thought, training on my own? I've had, I've had kind, I've just signed a long-term contract. I, I, I was getting on well with you as a manager, your staff. I love the lads, you know. So he made me train on my own. Then he made me train with Phil Jevons. I don't know what Phil Jevons had done wrong. Um, <laughs> Poor lad. But, but we were kind of <laughs> like, we were training up, the lads were training behind the ground at Boothry. We were training at, um, at Cottingham running. And, and I was thinking, what have I done here? So, so it got to the Friday and Colin Murphy, we'd done a bit of running. And Colin Murphy, who was his assistant, came to a group of five or six of us who weren't in the squad. He went, you're not in the squad, weekend off. So we were like, right, OK. Now, weekend off was a weekend off. It didn't mean you have to come to the game to watch the game. It was just a weekend off. So, so I came home up in Whitehaven and obviously Carlisle were playing at home. So I went to watch Carlisle, which wasn't the brightest thing to do. <laughs> um, and and to make it even worse, I got some tickets, but they were in the director's box. Nice. So so I'm sat in the director's box, and next minute somebody takes a photo, and it had got down to hold Stuart Green's in the director's box of Carlisle, sat next to the chairman. Like I I did never in my wildest dream was I going to leave a a big contracted Hull City to go to Carlisle United, you mm. know. So anyway, so then. Word got around. Hull got beat that. We got beat that day against Lincoln at home, I think. And he, and the pressure was massively yeah. on him. There was big pressure on Pete because he, he he kind of got a reaction early on from the team, but then results weren't going great. Yeah. And to lose at home to Lincoln was massive, and and of course, I I was to blame, and I wasn't even there. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. then. Skip. So then yeah. they rang, they rang me up. What are you doing? I said, Well, I've been given the weekend off, and they were like, Yeah, but you still should come to the game. I said, Well, hang on, you don't normally ask boys to come to the game if they've got the weekend off. If they're there, they're there, you know. Mm. So, so anyway, they they tried to find me two weeks' wages, um, and Pete got me in, and he said, um, You've went and sat in the director's box. You should have been here supporting your teammates. You don't care about the club and your teammates. And I said, no, I, I, I do. I've went home to spend time with my family. You've given me the weekend off. I've made a mistake by going and sitting in a director's box. So he'd had enough of me by then. And uh, he was under that much pressure early on in his whole career. Mm. He was under pressure because we weren't winning games and Adam was Adam just wanted to win every week. And um, so he kind of blamed me and then Carlisle obviously came in for me and and I was, to, I, I, I made a stupid mistake in going. I should have just rided out the storm, and and I would have got back in the team. I should never have went. Um, and and I, I suppose when I look back at it, I was a young. I'm not making excuses, but I was a young lad. I kind of wanted an experienced pro mm. to put his arm around me and say, "Listen, Greeny, you don't leave Hull City to go to Carlisle." But mm. but I didn't. I was headstrong, and yeah. Carlisle were promising me the world. 
and I thought I'll go home. Peter Taylor doesn't like me. Um, he's turned the fans against because he turned everyone against me. Um, it was. I mean, I, I remember the reaction to that, and it, I can remember it being yeah. really. It was almost toxic, you know, the way yeah, that did, the yeah, fans came did. out and, against and you. And I'll be in totally a way. honest with you, I made a mistake because I should never have left. But I had. I was given the weekend off, and from the first six months of my whole career, any player that got given the weekend off was never forced to go to the game. So I was just doing a normal thing. Yeah. Um, but but I suppose sitting in Carlisle United director's box probably wasn't the brightest idea. But for him, for him with the experience <laughs> that he had as a manager mm. and as a person, he, I think he should have got me in and said, "Right, enough's enough. Get your head down." Yeah. So I've you say you find two weeks' wages. Yeah. You tra- I've just get yourself yeah. training Monday, get your head down, yeah. and prove to me that you want to be here, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I've I've just given you a huge contract. I've just mm. we've just paid over a hundred grand for you. Come back and but he never yeah. he um he kinda used it against me. Um which which to sum it all up, I think we were both wrong. Um yeah. I think he'll never he would never admit mm. it. I still speak to him now, he would never admit it. But um but I think we were both wrong and a bit naive. And, and I wanted maybe an Ian Ashby or um, Alan Fetish. No, I didn't really know him. Um, one of the experienced lads to say, Greeny, come here. Yeah. yeah just yeah, so to just get hold of you. Just just like that, yeah. out. He, he phased all the experienced lads out. Um, so I didn't really have one yeah. of them to say, come on, Greeny, you're not going anywhere. But on the other hand, some of them lads might have wanted, wanted me to go to get a bit more lime, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, like, once you have gone, within a couple of games, you're playing us. What what was that like, you know, getting tonked 5-1, your new team, you're playing in front of 4,000-odd 4, people in front of, you know, with, with the greatest, <laughs> with the greatest respect, respect, not the best ground in, there, in the country. Yeah. <laughs> um, Love that. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and you've got you've got the city fans chanting, "Are you watching Stuart Green?" Are you what's, I'll tell you what what's going on really, in your head at that point? Yeah. Um, yeah, I couldn't play anywhere. Oh, of I course, really, yeah, I was like yeah. Really yeah. Turns it alone. I got, I got a bad dose of flu, but I don't know whether it was kind of stress related. Mm. Thinking what you know, I, I made the right stress, decision, yeah. and 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 the, the the difference with Carlisle was when I went on loan from Newcastle. There was no pressure on Carlisle because it was still Michael Knighton's club. They had no money. I was a young lad with no fear and I just went in there and played well for a couple of months. Mm. When I came from Hull to Carlisle, it was like, he's going to save us. <laughs> he's going <laughs> to... Green, the Stuart Green, the local lad, is going to... And they were, uh, we were absolutely horrend- horrendous as a team, horrendous individuals. But but I should have seen that because I played them months earlier at Boothry Park and we beat them about four nil. Um, <laughs> so so at that game, <laughs> that game I was at home listening to it on the radio, um, and it just slowly at Carlisle started to fall apart. And I thought, what on earth have I done? <laughs> um, but but as I was doing that, I was thinking, I just wish somebody had said. Greeny, everybody yeah. loves you at Hull. Just mm-hmm. calm down, and and somebody had said to Peter Taylor, "Come on, sort it out," and and it would have been all right, you know. Yeah. But it was because mm. you had to work quite hard to get all the fans yeah, back I, on board I when did. you I came back, didn't you? Pretty early on, when I was at Carlisle, I thought, "I'm, I'm you know, Carlisle, Carlisle had paid thirty grand, and then they had another hundred and twenty to pay, and they were never going to pay that and my wages as well." So, so Pete, Pete actually rang me and said, how's it going? And I said, it's not great. And um, he said, are you coming back? I said, I think I am. I said, but we're like second bottom. We're, we're trying to get out of relegation. Don't say anything. And he said, right, okay. He said, you've got a lot of work to do when you come back. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so anyway, so he left that conversation and spoke to the local radio and said Stuart Green could be coming back. So obviously Roddy <laughs> Roddy, Co- Roddy Collins got wind of that. 
got me off the bus and said, you, you've, you're you organising a move back to Hull. I said, hang on, I'm not. Peter Taylor's rang me and said, are you coming back? And I said, I might be, I don't know. So anyway, so I left there and I was kind of off for three months and it gave me a good time to kind of get my head right, get myself fit to come back pre-season with the club again. I was quite nervous, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's, it's like starting and, and again, I'll be I suppose, you, isn't it? Um, my game totally, totally changed because um, Pete obviously obviously took my number 10 off me. And th- being number 10 for Hull City was massive for mm-hmm. me. I, I, I kind of, my hero was always a number 10. And, and I kind of thought, I'm number 10 for Hull, this huge city, and I'm the number 10, you know. So he took that off me. And then he said, listen, you can't, you can't just play when you've got the ball. You've got to be a defensive shape. And so, honestly, my game changed massively when I come back. Um, and that probably told by my my lack of, um, not lack of goals, but I should have, I think I got eight that year. Although we got promoted, uh, the Stuart Green the year before would have got about 14. Mm. But he kind of changed me into more of a team defensive player. And, and to be fair for the team, it worked, you know. So we go, obviously we've done your time away from uh, away from City at Carlisle, and then you've come back. Um, what was that o three o four promotion season like to start with? Because obviously you've come back from Carlisle, and kind of I don't know, I don't know if tail between your legs is is, is correct, but Peter said you had a lot of work to do. And you just feel like you just wanted to prove that you you wanted to just get your place back and win everybody back. Is that how it was to start with? It, it was a little bit to start with, yeah. I had to, um, I had to kind of adapt my game, um, and and be a little bit more team, team kind of based, um, and and it, it stopped me going forward a lot. Um, mm. I, I was quite nervous for the friendlies, if I'm being honest, um, and I think for the first, for the first little while. My player was a little bit nervy. Mm. Um, I think it would be if you. Not, not. I'm trying to make an excuses for you, like. But if you, if you, if is that if that has happened, um, you want to make an impression, and you think about it more than just, oh, I've just had a good season. I'm just going to carry on. It's it, 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 it it's was, hard, wasn't it? Yeah. If if I remember League Two, um, I didn't really enjoy League Two a lot, mm. um, because obviously I was a bit nervy and. And Pete wanted me to be more defence minded, um, and I was on the right wing. Then I was in the middle. Then I was on the right. Um, so it, it was it was it was a tough seat. Although we got promoted, and, and and don't get me wrong, it was it was a wonderful achievement. Um, I had to change the way I played, um, which which it was totally new for me because I'd been mm-hmm. so attacking all my life. I had to think about helping out defensively as well, and and obviously if I was still too attacking, it, it wouldn't have worked because they would have found holes, you know. Yeah. Um. That what, what did you think your, your best? Clarity. What What did you think your best position was across the midfield, Stuart? Because you played in, like you say, in a lot of roles. I think I even remember you playing up front one game away at Bury. Um, mm. So what What for you was was your best position? I always wanted to play in the centre, and it was it was Peter Taylor that that kind of said, "Listen, trust me, you're not a centre midfielder because you can't tackle." <laughs> and, 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 I, and he was absolutely spot on. My best position was probably was right midfield, um, or right side of a three, yeah. in a, in, a, in an attack minded with if you like Ian Ashby in the middle, Dean Keats on the left. Yeah, yeah. Me right side. That that's that's the position I played in when when I scored that goal against Hartlepool on Boxing Day. Mm. Um but but right side of midfield, because Pete gave me licence to also when the ball's on the other side getting behind the front two. Um that was my best position probably throughout my career. Um and because we had Stuart Elliott on the left who would give you natural width. Mm. He was always a, a le- an out and out left winger. He couldn't come inside because because his brain would he, 
seize up. He could. He couldn't. <laughs> if Stuart Elliott came in to send him in field, it would just be an absolute car crash. So he would. <laughs> he would stay on the left hand side and just run and batter everything and score goals. Whereas I would play right midfield but drift inside, and that was without doubt my best position. Yeah. It's- it's interesting that I was going to ask you what it was like to play in that midfield, you know, because there are a lot of great players in there um, that you played with. One that you didn't mention, um, who I think gets an, an, a really tough time in terms of how he's remembered by City fans, is Junior Lewis. Um, what, what were your impressions of Junior? Loved him. Absolutely loved playing with him. Whenever I did play centre midfield with Junior, I always had a good game and it was because... He would do all the rubbish work. He would do all the cleaning up. And as soon as he'd done that, he would just pass it to me. Mm. He was different to Ian Ashby, um, but he was superb to play with, superb to train with. He was an absolute joy to have in your team. He's not great on the eye. Mm. and He gives the ball away an awful lot and he does some silly things. (laughs) What you've got to remember is he always kept going for the ball. Mm. Yes, yeah, he, he never went missing, did he? Yeah, no matter how bad he was playing, he always went and got it. And that's why Pete signed him. And I remember when Pete signed him, every, all of us like, were thinking, what is he doing? Because Junior turned up to training like he was like a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> and his feet, his feet were like, his feet were all over the place. He couldn't trap a ball. And we were thinking, and he said, and Peter Taylor said, you lot are probably thinking, why have I signed him? But he will always, always, no matter what happens, go and get that ball. And he did. And nine times out of ten, when he got that ball, if I was playing with him, he would just slide a little pass to me and say, off you go. He was absolutely superb to play with. I love that. I love that. I, you know, I, I, I don't want to overstate what sort of player he was, but I do think he's... he's um... The, you know, much maligned by City fans just because he looked awkward. You know, he's an awkward looking player, but I think he was, you know, an important player for us over that 18 months he was with the team. And, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you another thing about him as well. We played um, we played Chesterfield in League One once on a yeah. Sunday. Um, I think we were the only game to play on a Sunday. And I th- I'm not sure, but we might have had quite a lot of injuries up front. And Pete, Pete put Junior up front. And we were thinking, what what's he doing? <laughs> Pete actually set up my um, junior set up my goal. The ball went up to him. He held it up, flicked it off to me, and I scored. He was like, he was just superb. But I can understand why fans didn't take to him because he's not like he's not like a Craig Fagan who's who's blistering on the eye. He's not like a Nicky Barnby. You know what I mean? Um, no, no. But he he, do, he did important work. I think. You know, huge, he did huge work, and and especially, especially away from home. I remember playing. I remember. I think Ian Ashby was suspended, and I remember Boston away playing with Junior, and Boston was a horrendous place to play. Yeah, is yeah. that the one towards the end of the season? Yeah, and and we obviously needed to win, and and it was uh, it was packed in that horrendous little ground, and yeah. Boston were like. I think I, you might tell me the manager of Boston at that time. He was no, uh, it was it, it was what's his. Uh, he was a whole uh, lad, wasn't he? Lovely lad. Was he an ex whole player? Uh, Thompson. I'm I'm struggling. You might be right. I'm I struggling. Think, I think it was something Thompson. Lovely lad, but he had them like they were massive. They were they were strong and they were just like like war horses Boston. They weren't great. It was team, a team of cloggers. Yeah, and Junior, I remember that game. The pitch was lively. And Junior... <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. He was the calmest... Junior was the calmest fella in the UK that night. He just took the ball, no problem, slided it to me. Everything was 100 mile an hour, but Junior just calmed everything down. And what fans probably don't realise is Junior won us a lot of football games, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm pleased we've been able to set the record straight on him. <laughs> in in that season, like Boston was one of them. I'm, I'm pleased you brought that up. There's, there's some really memorable games from a, a fan's perspective. 
some that stick out for me are the two against Swansea, uh, the home game, obviously, for the attendance and, and the result, the atmosphere that night. I remember being, you know, it was one of the first really special atmospheres mm-hmm. at the KC. Um, and then not long after, there was the game against Oxford where we absolutely battered them and, you know, sent their gobby manager away with his tail between his legs after he'd been sounding off about how well we'd, you know, been performing in the budget and what have mm-hmm. you. So what, what were those games like for you to play in, you know, the special ones of that season? Because there was, um, you also scored away at Carlisle, you know, on your return and the Swansea away game. So what was what was your favourite game from that season? What was it like to play in the big atmospheres that year? I, I, if, I, if I go on that Swansea game first, Swansea game, we we were we were up for that. We knew, I think they were second in the league or, or first or whatever, and we knew we had to perform in that. That was our first huge test as a club. Um, obviously, the club had been on a downward spiral for a, for quite a while. Um, the season before, it hadn't worked for Jan, it kind of hadn't worked for Pete, and then he got it right with his recruitment in the summer. We were all firing, and that was our first huge game. And, and, and I don't think we played particularly well, but we got the job done, and that, that showed a sign that we could not play well, but get the job done. Um, Oxford at home, if I remember Oxford at home, Oxford were a very, very good side. And Ian Atkins, yeah, they were. Ian Atkins I kind of knew him well at that time. He got them he got them playing really, really well. Um, that was another. But I'll tell you what won us that game. Danny Olsop and Ben Burgess were absolutely phenomenal in that game. Um, the link-up. Colin Murphy, our assistant manager, he always used to say, you two don't pass to each other enough. And Danny and Ben were like, Centre forwards pass to each other, you know. Midfielders pass to us. What, what's he going on about? <laughs> but, it, but Colin Murphy was absolutely spot on. And what them two did was, them two kind of we got the ball up to them as quickly as we could, and them two just done one twos and and played with each other. And them two absolutely ripped Oxford apart. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a huge game, and that I think we we beat them about four one four two. But but yeah, for me, for me, of course, personally. Going back to Carlisle was was a huge day, and I was I was quite anxious because I obviously wanted to do well, um, and and the pitch was poor, but there was I, I think there was there was thousands at Carlisle, and obviously I was getting slaughtered um, <laughs> off the Carlisle fans, and I got in. This this kind of summed up Peter Taylor as a manager. This is how good he was. I, I first half I was I was right midfield, and I got in a couple of times. And I kind of fluffed it, you know, with my left foot and I missed a couple of chances. And I got in at half time and Pete said, Keep getting in. And I looked at him and he said, Keep getting into them positions. Keep getting in because you will score. And and he, he through all his experience of being a winger himself, he was absolutely spot on because I got in again and scored off my left foot. Um and it that was that was a massive day for my career because um, to go back there after getting slaughtered and score and to score an away game, I wasn't brilliant away from home as it personally, but to go and play well there and score away from home, um, you know, was superb. But I remember when I scored, it was a left-footed shot. And as I've, as I've kind of passed it in off the post, as it's gone past Matty Glennon, he shouted something like, you lucky bastard. And, <laughs> and, and I'd, I, got on re- I got on really, really, really well with Matty Glenn. I love Matty Glenn. And, and, and I, I remember that. And it just kind of slid past him. It was a decent finish, if I remember. You did. Say, you said there that you felt you performed better at home rather than away. Was that because you kind of fed off the crowd and the energy and everything and having a big crowd behind you? One hundred percent. I um I was a home player. Yeah. I knew that them fans, I knew them fans. You know, loved me at times. Um, even even after what happened at Carlisle, I come back and and it didn't take them long for my relationship to pick up with them again. Um, and I think away from home, and Peter Taylor always used to say, "Greeny, you've got to perform better away from home, otherwise I'm going to leave you out." And he left me. He probably left me out too many times. But I think, <laughs> yeah, I think away from home, I didn't want to do that first half an hour of absolute grind. Grass, so, yeah, yeah. So, so for the first twenty minutes, half an hour, you, you're like, you've got your Ian Ashby who's like incredible at that. 
because he, he just like battered everything that come near him. And I didn't want to do that. That wasn't me. I wanted to like, I wanted to get the ball and, and run with it and, and do, but you couldn't do that. Flair, it was flair, all, yeah. It was always a fight. Yeah. So your likes of Ashby, Lewis, little Keatsy. Yeah. Um, Love getting stuck in and getting up. Home, so. Yeah. So, so that's probably why I didn't play all of the away games. Mm. Um, do I wish I'd done that? I wish I'd done it a bit more to play more. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can't if you're in if you're in League Two. You you, you know, you're not going to get the, the finished article, are you? You know, no, no. no. There was something um, Brendan Smith where asked me to ask you, and you brought up Murph. I think it's about him. Wasn't there something to do with the coach and a microphone or something? <laughs> oh, what we. <laughs> I've, I've read about this. Me. Yeah, with you. Yeah, did you do some sort of impression of him? Or I, I used to. I, I do you know what it is? I couldn't do it now. But I, <laughs> I used to kind of. I love Murph, and and um, and he was like, he was so old school. He wouldn't last five minutes now in a in a in a club. But we had so much respect for him. He would he would come in and crack a joke and. Um, and he would do his old, his old, you know, running, running what he used to do in the like eighties and nineties, and he, he was just superb, so funny. Murph, although the fans probably didn't see it, and I don't think Adam Pearce seen it, Murph was probably worth about nine points a season because he's up, he's banter in the dressing room, and and his knowledge. He used to say to me, "How many times have you got in the box?" In that first half, Greeny, and I'd be like, "Well, I'm doing all right, Murph." And he'd say, "No, no, you've got in the box three times. You need to get in seven times each half." Because he was like, he was a stats man, mm. but but he was a good mm. stats man. He used to say to me, "Greeny, you're getting the ball off John Anderson, and he, and because you can't turn, you fire any back at Delaney for him to take a touch." Just pass it back. Simple. I said, "Well, he should be able to handle that." And he said, "Yeah, but we're not all as good as you, <laughs> you know." And and he was just like, he was just he was just golden. He, he really was. And I'll tell you a true story here. Peter Taylor at Hull was probably his best as a manager, and he had Colin Murphy. He had Ian Ashby as his captain. He had all us lot who had done everything he asked us to do. He had Steve Butler, who Steve Butler was all right, and he had Adam Pearson, who would have done anything for him. And when he went to Crystal Palace, mm. he didn't have that, mm. and and that was massive because of Crystal Palace. Um, he wasn't the same manager that I knew, you know. Mm. Uh, so Colin Murphy was not just good for us as players, but he was brilliant for him. Um, obviously, the, was there was something else about a bust up in there. The changing rooms for for the Swansea game. Away from away, away from, from home, yeah. yeah. Um, that was that was two lads who who cared so much about their own performance, cared so much about winning, and we were. I, I think that was the Vetchfield, which was a yeah. a tight tight ground. Um, it was bloody, bloody <laughs> horrible. I, I was at that game. Like everything about going there, apart from seeing the game, was, was horrible. I, I made my, I made my football league debut at the Vetch for Carlisle. It took us ten hours to get down there, and I made my de- and I touched the ball three times, and <laughs> and I heard honestly it was horrendous. And Roddy Collins was on the radio saying, "What a performance by Stuart Green! You can tell how, <laughs> you can tell how good, you can tell how good he's going to be." I rang my dad. I said, "Dad, I haven't touched the ball." Um, so what's he talking but, about? What yeah, yeah. But, but but that was Roddy. But anyway, that 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 day, we um, I think I set up the goal for Ben Burgess that 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 day. Swansea. That's yeah, his second one. I think he did. Yeah. It was a cross. He, he, um, it? Ian Ian Ashby and, and Mark Joseph had a disagreement. It might have been on who was Mark and who were a corner. Yeah, and they've come in at half time and and they've proper went for each other, and we were just sat there like. What's going on here? <laughs> but and obviously me, I've never had a fight in my life. I was like in the shower, um, <laughs> and, and and I remember Peter Taylor. He loved it. He loved it because he he because he, he cared, had created, it, I suppose. yeah. Peter Taylor had created a dressing room 
where we would do anything for each other. We got, you know, and and as much as Mark Joseph and Ian Ashby had a go at each other, they were best friends. Mm. And and we went out and performed, and and he loved that because he created that that atmosphere. You know, it was they were special. Day. Although it wasn't great to see, you, they they were like special days. You know. Yeah. Was there a couple mm. of other games, Rich? That I know you were you were saying that you were going to ask about specific games. I don't know if the Yeovil game was one of them. Yeah, yeah, that was that was it. The Yeovil game. It was like um, it kind of like you know you you'd have a good season. You know you're adapting your game. All right, you've not been as successful in front of goal as you you maybe would have liked, but getting the penalty that day and and you know having the the courage to to step up and take it. It was kind of like capped the redemption of Stuart Green you know, Hull City for me. So can you talk us through that? Like, massive game. You get the chance to put us 1-0 up if I, it, it was 1-0 up, yeah. Um, what was it that was, like for it, you? It, it was strange because I don't think as a club we had been given a lot of penalties that season. Um, and I was obviously on them. I was on the penalties. I think Danny also wanted it. <laughs> but, I, but, but I was on them. And... Um, and I've put the ball down and I always, if you remember, put my penalties at one place. Um, but because we hadn't had any or many throughout the season, we should have got a couple. Um, and we hadn't had many. Nobody knew where I put them. Um, it kind of worked so out I, all right at the end then. <laughs> yeah, so I put it down. I put the ball down and I always knew I was going to slide it in that corner. And I looked over to the bench and Peter Taylor, and again, listen, it's something I, I did when I was a manager a couple of years ago. I always, he always sat down. He always got his staff and the bench to sit down because he, he, he didn't want to put pressure on the penalty taker by kind of being stood up, you know. It was mm. a calm... It's like they expect, it you, to, expect you to yeah. score it easily and then if you don't, then your head's down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I looked over to him and, and the bench and, and before I knew it, I was running towards it and the the pitch was really lively, really flat and it just skidded off off the pitch into the corner. And um, I, I didn't really know how significant that was going to be because it was so early on in the game. Mm. I think it was 10, 11 minutes. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. But obviously a huge moment for me when I look at that goal, I, which is quite a lot, a huge <laughs> moment because... Because <laughs> you know that there's like it was in front of the city fans as well, wasn't it? In front of this, and the fans were was, home yeah. watching as well, and yeah, and, back, and yeah. the whole, the whole, the day was just tremendous. And then obviously Ash scores an absolute worldie. Yeah. Um. But you, but but the thing about that was, Yeovil were a very very good side. No, they didn't lie down Yeovil for us. I remember that the best football and football inside in the league. Um. Because they, they had a couple of Spanish lads in the side at the time, didn't they? I think, was it one of the Spanish lads who scored the um, the header to equalise, wasn't I, it? I can't remember. All so I the... remember is Gary Johnson and obviously his son played centre midfield. Mm. Um, he had a really, really good side. They had a kid called Gavin Williams, who was, who was a midfielder a little bit like myself, who was a top, top player. And they... Um, they they didn't go, but I don't think they went up in the. I can't remember who went up in the playoffs, but they were probably the best side outside of um, Doncaster. Us, I can't remember who else. Were. I think I think it was Huddersfield. Yeah, they Yeovil were probably the best side apart from us three. So obviously that well, that that season we we end up going up, don't we? Uh, up to to League One. Um. And what what was the what was the atmosphere like for them building up for the next season? Because obviously you've come back after a torrid time last season. Then we've got promoted. Mm. That was then our second promotion season, wasn't it? So you said mm. yourself you, you didn't like the League Two play. Was it more suited mm. to you when you were playing League One? One hundred percent. League One was probably my best time. Mm. Um, absolutely loved it. Pete played me a bit more central as well as on the right. He always kind of went between the two. Mm. And I remember, I remember I spent the summer, I was exhausted from from League Two. I was getting kind of injections in my foot. I had a problem with my foot, so I was numbing my pain and, and I'd lost a lot of weight. I was exhausted and I spent a couple of couple of weeks in Cyprus and then I got back um, 
done a little bit of running um, and I was f- absolutely on it. I was fit as a fiddle going into League One and um, and I hit the ground running. And, and I just, yeah, yeah and you I, really and I did. just remember, I just remember thinking to myself, I'm going to, I'm going to run, I'm going to run more because League Two was a lot like jogging round, chasing after the ball, back, forward, over your head, back. And by the time... There's a lot of diagonals you, in that, isn't there? Uh, it was yeah. like you were absolutely knackered playing in League Two because you were constantly, the ball was constantly in the air. So I thought to myself that summer, what I'm going to do is when our full-backs get it, because Pete wants us to be a little bit direct, I'm just going to run. So every time the ball went up to our front man, I'm just going to run and play off him. And midfielders couldn't stay with me. Yeah. Um, and and obviously I scored on the first day, and then it, then at Torquay, and and that was probably that was probably the best I've played in League One. And then I got injured, of course. Yeah. I mean that that night at Torquay, did we play like a front three? I think. Um. Um. Just. The, I think there was yourself and Stuart Elliott and I can't remember who else was in it, but you, I mean, my brother brought this up to me earlier, like your movement that night was absolutely yeah, fantastic. We, um, I, I can't remember what, what we played. I, I remember I scored a volley um, and Stuart Elliott scored and then I, yeah, yeah you got I, a couple, and I, think. I got a dead leg. Um, um, but that, that was a, Torquay was a good ground for me in terms of scoring. Um, but yeah, we, 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 we weren't feared. We weren't fear in League One at all. We were a better team in League One than we were in League Two. We'd we'd kind of similar players. I'm trying to think who Pete signed for League well, One. Bambi, Bambi signed. Didn't Bambi sign? Delroy Fierce, Bambi. Was yeah, a, was did Bambi thing, sign that yeah, summer? Bambi did, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron Wilbraham yeah. came in. Uh, Leon Court, uh, Roland Edge. Um, See, yeah, all that's like players, that. Adam Wilbraham, not so much, but all of them players played a huge part. Um, Roland, um, Roland yeah. Edge, when he when he played, he he kind of never let us down. Um, you forget how much he did I'd, come in for Doss actually that season. Uh, he 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 done his job, nothing fancy. Got it, give it, done his defensive job. Leon Court was exceptional. Um, one of my best friends to this day, um, and he was just outstanding. The set pieces we used to do, Pete used to put on because Leon wasn't great with the ball at his feet, um, and no. and he'll openly admit that. Um, in fact, he was awful. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but but <laughs> in the air, he was he was like unbelievable. And 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 Pete used to put some set pieces on, and honestly the goals he used to score with his head in training and then he he done it in a game. Um and him and Delaney formed an unbelievable partnership. Um I would say I would say you might tell me somebody else. I would say Leon Court as well as probably Boaz Mile was, was his best signing. I I can't think well, I don't know, what do you reckon, Rich? Because obviously Bam was massive, but I'd, I'd probably, I'd, yeah, I'd probably put Bambi in there as well, but um, Nicky, that's maybe an Nicky, obvious one. Nicky was, Nicky was brilliant, brilliant for me because because I could play off him. Um, but I think perhaps Boaz Myhill and 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 Leon Court just ahead of Nicky. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it, it's it's hard not yeah. to make I a think, very I good think case, Bambi, you know, for uh, always going to be. For, for Bo. Yeah, because of just the name that he was, but I think when you're talking about yeah. like in like yeah, yeah, whoever has the most impact on the team, if you've got a solid centre like goalkeeper and um, centre back that you can rely on, that's yeah, it's a big spine yeah. that you can spine build towards, side. isn't it? So I understand. Yeah, PT yeah. signed. I maybe put signed Dawson, Dawson mm. as well, didn't he? That was a bit of like, a wild card, that one. Yeah, he did. Yeah, score, and I maybe I thought I... that could have gone a, a different way, but like his recruitment. His recruitment was absolutely outstanding. Mm. He, yeah. he, he, like the. I mean, yeah. Jan Moby signed myself, okay, on loan. Ian Ashby and Stuart Elliott. Now you, you could say, them two, certainly more than me, were were absolutely pivotal in success. Mm. Um, but Pete Simons, 
he very, very rarely got it wrong. And I, and I remember him in League One. I had just, well, we'd, we'd been battered off Colchester in the Cup, I think. Um, and then in the league, or some, and Craig yeah. Fagan was like, he was unbelievable. He tore our centre halves, and he and I think he went to Adam and said, "Listen, can I bring him in?" <laughs> and he was another one. Pete's Pete's sign in recruitment at Hull City was absolutely outstanding. Oh, I don't think there's any bad signings there, is there? From, from the top of my head, I can't. No, I'm I'm, I'm trying. Even even Aaron Wilbraham got to yep. sell a couple of goals. Yeah. He 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 got a couple of big ones. I think he scored um, scored a big one mm. uh, at Stockport, and I think it was him got. Um, oh, he scored off. Was it Steve Angus cross against yeah, Huddersfield? You, you could argue. Um, you could argue maybe a couple didn't work out. Maybe John Walters, although John he could get in the number, team. Really, know. could he? I know he went yeah. on to be like a massive player, but. I think there were there were other factors there with John though, and that um, that the, you know off the pitch things that didn't necessarily uh, help him. I don't think Delroy Facey no, necessarily worked no, out. But, but these um, were Pete. Pete often oftenly, you know, used to say not every sign will work, but he did used to sign a lot of players. Uh, and yeah, and if you get more right than you get I mean, wrong, then well, you know you are on the for a successful is, tenure, either, aren't you? So many good no. ones. You, you look at them two strikers, Ben Burgess and Danny Olson, mm. or oh, they were like in League Two, they were unstoppable. Yeah, definitely. every single week, especially yeah. away from home, every week either Ben would get one, or Danny would get one, or one would get two, and Stuart Elliott would score. You know, it, it was just his recruitment at Hull was was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Did you um towards the end of this season in league? Yeah, we, I, did you get injured, Stuart? No, I you, you didn't. You didn't play a lot, did flying. you? I got ten goals leading up to just after or before Christmas, and we played Colchester, and I went to I went to hit a volley outside the box, and I kicked the bottom I, I kicked the bottom of um, somebody's foot, and what it done, it ruptured all my ligaments on my Ooh. ankle, so my my ligaments come away from my bone. And, and and anyway, it swelled up. And I went in on Monday. And obviously, I wasn't right to, to do anything that week. The week later, I tried to train. I said, listen, I'm, I, I'm nowhere near it. So I went for a scan. And the scan didn't show up any, didn't show up what it needed to. So then I went for keyhole surgery. And the surgeon, I woke up and the surgeon said, listen, you, you know, it's ruptured off your bone. You're out for the rest of the season. And... Um, and it absolutely broke my heart because I'd scored 10 goals. I was fit as a fiddle. I was flying. I was playing kind of centre mid. I was just I was just running and running. And, and every other week, I felt like I could score. And I, I could have went on to get maybe 15, 20 goals. And I got injured, you know. And it, it kind of it ruined me for, for three. Well, longer, really, because it took that long to heal, mm. you know. Because wasn't that was that the season yeah. where you scored in the first yeah, you... minute and then the ninety six? Yeah, that was because that was yeah, like that, that, that's the longest that that that's the longest gap between a, one player scoring in in one match. So I read. Yeah, I, th- I think that was. I think it was after about twelve yeah. seconds. But that was that was how I played. If you re- if you look at that goal, Delroy takes it and he has a shot, and I am just flying into the box. As if to uh, waiting for a pullback, but that's how I played. I was constantly flat, running into the box or running beyond, um, and I got injured, and it absolutely broke my heart. It was so tough to deal with that, especially um, then. Junior Lewis and Ian Ashby played centre midfield, and they had no no runners going forward. Listen, we still got some unbelievable results, mm. but to watch, I, I couldn't really watch. It was horrendous. I, any any away game, I would come up to yeah. Whitehaven and spend time with my mum um, and my family. And if it was a home game, I would kind of leave five minutes before the end and go home and sulk. I was I was I was in quite a low way then because um, I played so well. I wanted to be a part of the promotion party, and I was, mm. but I wasn't. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's, is, is it different oh, when you're not so, actually so, involved in playing? It's so sad when you're not, when you haven't had a part of it. I had had a part of it, don't get me wrong, and we were top of the league. We were second behind Luton when, when I got injured. And, um, and, and obviously, my goals will have counted and, 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 and whatnot, but you just don't feel like, because you haven't played, you just don't feel like you're part of it. You, know you what I mean? feel like it's you, not a third is the wrong word. I can't think of it. But because you you feel like you wanted to contribute so much to it, but you were unable to, it's like you've been robbed of it a bit, isn't it? It doesn't feel oh, it real was, as much. It, it was horrendous. And, and and when I was watching the team, we, we were still getting results, and we were. I think we we kind of limped over the line a little bit. We were still playing well, but I just thought, oh, I would have, I would have, I would have. Um, Run onto that flick on there. I yeah. would have probably took that free kick. I would have done that, and and I, I was I was in a low way. But little did I know that that injury, what kept me out the rest of that season, would affect me for half of the championship one as well. Yeah. You know, because um, I was it 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 mm. healed, but although it healed, it stiffened up. So because it was my right foot, I was striking a ball, and I still wasn't right. I couldn't run right. So for the first six months, I still wasn't right. My performance in the championship was poor. I was poor. Um, the the team was poor. We were limping over the line. We were getting beat. We were drawing games. And, and it just wasn't me. And I, I only came into my own the latter part of the season when I was fully fit. Mm. It was just when you miss you miss pre season then, don't you? So the, the work you yeah, it's do to get the fitness and sharpness is not there, is it? Well, I, tell you, I, I I did do pre-season, but I just wasn't striking the ball mm. properly. And I used to strike the ball with my right foot and it would just come so natural. Yeah. Um, striking the ball, having a shot, running, t- twisting and turning. I just wasn't, I was, I just wasn't right. But I'd been out so long in League One, I was desperate to play in the championship. And I played the first few games... But I, I, I was almost like I'd went back to my league two where I was scared to make a run. Yeah. I was so defensive, and it just wasn't me. So I ended up, I ended up out the team for a long time, and it was only kind of after Christmas mm. where I thought I'm, I'm feeling a bit right now. And then obviously people put me back in the team, and and we done well in the end of the season. Yeah, you came into your own towards the end of that season, like you say, because you scored um, some fantastic goals like, and some big ones as well. The one against Crew at home, I remember being, you know, a pivotal game in the season. And then another big game from that year was um, the home game against Leeds, and I can remember you having an absolute stormer on the right wing as well, because it was, if I remember right, you had, the beast. Yeah, uh, and set John Park up for his goal, on, wasn't it? I said, I'm sure you'll ask me about my my best Hull City moment, I would probably say that was it. Because, Leeds at home. Because, yeah, because was it? the stadium was sold out. They could have probably sold it out three times over. Mm. We we needed to win to stay up um, mathematically. They needed to win to get in the playoffs. And um, we were magnificent that day. And, and my performance, uh, I remember... Really well because I, I I had to do a bit of both. I I had to go forward, but I also had to help out. Um, that was a huge day for me personally in the club. It's not very often that that Hull City beat Leeds, um, and and that was a special day. Yeah, I mean the atmosphere that day because it was an early kick off. We were on the box. Um, I think we were. I think we were on the box. I can't remember accurately, but yeah, just the the, the noise in the stadium, of, <laughs> like the the bloody lid came off it when Parking scored. Was that did it, did it give you like hairs on the back of your neck? Because you'd obviously been some special moments at the KC. So like you say, it was the best one. Yeah, definitely. Can, can I, you still I, remember that feeling? I I had a chance in the first half and I could have scored, and that lifted me because what you've got to remember is we were lads who had two years earlier been the bottom half of League Two. So so we were we were kind of quickly out of League Two, into League One, quickly out of there, into the Championship. So we were playing with a little bit of fear and we were playing against huge players who Leeds United had on huge money 
and um, and we were outstanding. So it, 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 it's it's something that you that I'll that I, that will live with me forever. Setting Big Park, you know, what a player he was, and what a man. He's a really really good friend, um, superb player. Um, he was he was kind of a man mountain. He held it up well, and um, he he was another one. If if <laughs> he'll probably be the first to admit it. If if he lived better, he would have been. A lot better player than he was. Well, I've, um, I've listened to I listen to him every week because uh, there's the Under the Cosh podcast that he does. That's right. Um, yeah, I yeah. listen to him every week, and he's quite brazen about the fact that he's like, "Listen, I went out and got pissed, and then if, if I if I do duty not to train, I won't do it. I couldn't be asked. I just wanted to play football." But he was he's quite honest about that, isn't he? He, he, he didn't was look after himself as much as he could have done, sort of thing. And yeah, he's a gr- he's a he's a great lad. He sounds um, it. <laughs> and, and, and Pete, Pete brought him in, and he knew exactly what he was going to get from him. Mm. Um, it, I've got it, it's quite a funny story because when Pete left and Phil Parkinson come in, Phil Parkinson was massive on fitness, um, <laughs> and and um, and he um, and we, we were probably the fittest team in the country, but we couldn't pass the ball, you know. Um, <laughs> so so I remember he he had like a a fat club. Where, where if you were over a certain weight or body fat or yeah, whatever, BMI, rubbish, yeah, 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 you you had to come in early. So, um, so Big Parky was obviously in that category. <laughs> so, so Big Parky would come in and get weighed and do some fitness work, and then and then he'd have like an half an hour break, and then we would come in, the lads who who didn't need to. So after a couple of weeks, Phil Parkinson said, you know. Why can't you? You're not losing weight, and you're not. Um, you, it's not working. What's going on? And Parky said, "Well, you get me in early to do the fitness work, but then as I'm having a break, I'm going for a McDonald's." <laughs> <laughs> so I was waiting so, for something like that. Everybody said, "Well, I'm hungry. She got me working, so I need so to eat." Don't I? That that just summed Parky up. He wasn't bothered what people thought of him, but that was like. For, that was Phil Parkinson not understanding how good Parky was, and all Parky needed was left alone. Yeah. Every now and again, kicked up his backside, but he would deliver for you. Yeah. Yeah. Park- Don't matter Phil if he's Parkinson. not fit; he'll still bag your goals. Yeah. Phil Parkinson tried to change everything from minute one. Yeah. When it didn't need that, it just needed tweaked. Mm. So I can remember. Big- I can remember a friendly uh, that summer. I think it was Winterton first one, and Parking came out in his kit, and that year's kit was like a little bit tighter fitted. It was more fitted than the previous year, and, and it's still a John Parking looked like it, it, I think. Yeah, but he looked like he was wearing like a kid strip. <laughs> he was, he'd gone away, and he'd obviously had a good summer. He's absolutely massive. <laughs> oh, he, but but that was him. Like Peter Taylor didn't try and change that. No. Peter, well, no, because it worked, didn't it? He no, understood what he was about. Yeah, Peter yeah. Taylor just said, listen, I want you to eat, eat a bit better. I want you to look after yourself a bit better. But Pete knew what he would do. Yeah. Um, he died Phil for a fry-up Parkinson. in the mornings. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, Phil <laughs> Phil Parkinson coming out, Phil, it was funny. I, I remember Phil Parkinson said to me, because obviously when Pete left, Adam, Adam, has, Adam had made his mind up that, there was quite a few of us he didn't want at the club. Mm. Um, and I was one of them, um, which was fine. I was devastated, don't get me wrong. But we just survived in the championship. Pete told me there was a new contract. Um, and then three weeks later, he went to Palace. So obviously, Adam, I was on holiday. I was in Dubai and somebody rang me and said, you're on the back page of the um, whole Daily Mail. I said, why? Well, you, Keith Andrews and a couple of others can go. I said, all right, I didn't, didn't know that. So then my agent rang, he said, listen, I've had Adam Pearson on and you can go, you're, you're a free transfer. Um, so when Phil Parkinson come in, it was quite funny because Phil Parkinson had obviously, this was his first big job um, from Colchester. Colchester were like a pub club. Um, <laughs> and and he's, la- he's landed this big job and and he he he, he obviously got told Green, Green he goes and Keith Andrews or whatever. And, and I remember... Um, we were in Marbella on a pre-season tour and we were like we were up at 7 o'clock for swimming 
we were 10 o'clock agility runs, half four football training. We were the fittest team in the country, but we were useless. And, <laughs> and, um, and, and I remember um, Ian Adkins, going back to Ian Adkins, I, I got on quite well with him. And he rang me and he said, where are you going? I said, well, I don't know. I said, I've just, you know, a couple of months ago, I got told the club don't want me. He said, there's quite a few clubs in for you because of the way you perform. Like I said, I know. I said, but I don't know what's happening. He said, Greeny, Phil Parkinson, you know, quite likes you. I said, well, obviously he doesn't because I'm going. He said, no, nah, no. Nah. I said, I think he's kind of doing what Adam tells him to do, you know. Mm. So it was quite funny because a couple of weeks later, Phil Park, he was getting towards the deadline there. And Phil Parkinson had obviously been told, if you want to sign such and such, you've got to get rid of Greeny and Keith Andrews and such and such off the wage bill, you know. Yeah. So he pulled me and he said, right, you know, you won't go to Blackpool. Um, why? And I said, I don't want to. And he, <laughs> said, he said, well, why not? It makes sense for you. You're going to play games. I said, I don't want to go, so I'm not going. And he said, and I remember he looked, he was, he was absolutely desperate to get me out because the team weren't playing well. He'd signed a few players, which were good players, don't get me wrong, but they weren't playing well. I think they were losing games. They just yeah. got beat at home. We were so fit, but we were hopeless on the ball. And I think one of the worst of, starts City had had. Yeah, to, and I think it. a couple of people were starting mm. to say, well, why is Greeny not even on the bench? He hasn't done anything you know mm. but I was obviously at the games watching and, and he pulled me in training one day and he said why won't you go to Blackpool I said I don't want to go and he said why not I said because I'm better than that and and I said I want to play here he said you're not going to play here so anyway I said alright fair enough he said where do you want to go and I said well I want to stay here he said no go on where do you <laughs> want to he said where do you want to go and I'll ring them I said Man United <laughs> <laughs> and he just and he just kind of looked at me he just kind of looked at me as if, uh, what am I dealing with here? You know, <laughs> but but I, I just couldn't believe that he had come from Colchester and and he was being, and, and obviously Adam had made his mind up and listen, I love Adam Pearson to bits. We, we, we didn't really get on at the end, but I, I can't thank him enough for what he'd done for me. But I couldn't believe that he was letting his chairman tell him who to have and who not to have, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's a yeah. that's a manager's choice. When Peter Taylor was at Hull, I remember Adam Pearson used to say, "Why have we got Jason Price? He's not playing. He's like, why have we got him?" And Pete said, "I tell you why we've got him because when I need him, he'll come and score a hat trick." Mm. And 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 Price he did, you know. Mm. So so Peter Taylor didn't allow any of that to go on. Yeah, it was but what Phil, he said goes. I think, I yeah, 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 and that's how that's how we got all these wins, promotions, because it was his show. Adam yeah. trusted him, and it was his show. Phil Parkinson come in, and Adam was basically telling him who to keep and who not to keep. So I kind of jumped on top of that and had a little bit of fun with that, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously you went, you then went to Palace, where yeah. Taylor had just gone, didn't you? Yeah, um, um, but it. it, it it, it, that was it. That was funny because it was deadline day, and, and I was in the car, and and Hull were giving me an incredible deal to go. They were, they were, they were paying up the majority of my contract, and and I thought I'm going to have to go to Blackpool. I didn't want to go, but <laughs> Simon Grayson was pretty desperate, and and I thought I'll go. It's it's on the M6. I'm nearer home, yeah. if you like. So I'll go. I'll live in Lancaster. I worked it all out. And I was on my way over and Pete rang. He said, do you want to come to Palace? And I said, well, why have you left it this long? And he and he said, listen, my chairman's just agreed it. Come in. It won't be easy for you to get in the team, but come. So I, I remembered in the car, I rang my mum. I said, I can't turn down Crystal Palace, you know. Huge, huge club. And I wasn't keen on going to London. I, I, if you're a northerner, you're a northerner, and I'm a northerner. So yeah. I, I Ryan Williams keen. has said that to us. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I wasn't keen on going to London, but it was just a huge opportunity in club, and I was, and I'd played quite a season before. I was fit. I was obviously going to be fit because Park Phil Parkinson was running me every day. So, I, <laughs> so I, triple session. I was kind of ready. Yeah, I was. I was kind of ready for it. So that's that's how that ended up, really. Yeah. But I was. But listen, I, it was quite a. 
tough moment leaving Hull City. I, I know I, I, I know I went to the press when I left and I said I'm I'm moving to a bigger club and and I did. I said moving to Crystal Palace. I'm moving to a bigger club. That that was me kind of spitting my dummy out and, yeah. and feeling sorry for, and, and having a little go at Adam Pearson for, for letting me go really but yeah. I, I was devastated leaving Hull because you I know this is something that you wanted to kind of jump in on Rich but after you played your most amount of games for any club for Hull and then afterwards mm. there wasn't really a big length of time where you were at a club was there and 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 I'll touch on fans you know I I, I whenever I played for Hull I knew that if I give the ball away, them fans would still sing my name. Them fans would still wait for me after the game. Yeah. Um, I would still see shirts with my name on, and and I and I went to Crystal Palace, and obviously, obviously, I was going in there as as a squad player. Yeah. Um, and I didn't play for a while. Um, I done well when I played. I scored on my debut and whatnot, and and, and but I I had. I was going into a club where they were on the downward spiral. Um, they'd spent a lot of money. Ian Dowie had left. They'd sold all the best players, and and they were signing people like me and 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 um, and you know Shefki Kuchi, James Scorecroft, good 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 players, but not Andy Johnson and Fitzhall. And, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I was going to a club on the downward spiral. I wasn't playing a lot because I had good players ahead of me um, and left there and, and, and then went to, went to Blackpool. Yeah. And then, because later on you you were reunited with Pete Taylor as, as well again at Wickham, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, what happened with my career. I, I went to London and, and, um, and, and I was, I was, I was, when I played, I was doing quite well. Um, I was playing right midfield. I'd scored a few goals there was huge pressure on Peter Taylor. It was a different Peter Taylor from the Peter Taylor I knew at Hull. When I talk about running the show at Hull, it was a complete opposite of Palace. Yeah, he was working for Simon Jordan. Um, it was the players weren't the same. The players weren't listening to him like they were at Hull. The players didn't respect him like they did at Hull. They would answer him back. We would never answer him back at Hull. Yeah. Um, there was chaos in the dressing room. There was players. Um, arguing back with him, and we would never have dreamed of done that at all. Even you know, your Nicky Barnby, who's a who's a legend, wouldn't have answered him back. You know, because yeah. Nicky had that much respect. Um, but at Crystal Palace, it it was a total different ball game for him. And 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 I'll tell you what happened. I had done quite well there, and Pete got sacked. And then my mum felt really ill. Um, and and I touched on it before. My mum was like. She was my best friend, and 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 she turned really ill, and and I could have I could have went to Millwall or Colchester, but I I, I said to Neil Warnock, I want to go to Blackpool, I want to get up home, and when I was at Blackpool, my mum was kind of dying, um, and I, and I took it horrendous, and 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 I'll I'll be I'll be honest with you, that that kind of finished my career. Yes, I I I did go to to Wickham to be reunited with Peter Taylor again. Yeah. But I, I wasn't training as hard. Um, I was nowhere near, nowhere near the player I was when I was at Hull. I couldn't get on the end of passes. Um, I was absolutely a shadow of my former self, and and I just didn't have it. It it it, it killed me that much losing my mum mm. that I didn't have the desire to to train as hard, to push myself as hard. I kind of toiled through it, and and as a footballer. The minute you lose that, you can't get it back. Yeah, yeah, that's you've lost your edge. You, that's that's that. Yeah, especially as a, especially as a midfield runner, because I was a midfield runner. The minute you stop, stop putting the graft in, I couldn't see. Footballers tend to go back. So if you're a right midfielder, you might go yeah, to the right yeah, back. Yeah. If you're an, if you're an attacker midfielder, you might go and sit in front of the back four. But I couldn't defend. I couldn't defend. I couldn't head it, and I couldn't tackle. <laughs> So, so I had absolutely no chance. So the minute I stopped being able to run, yeah. I was finished. And at Wickham, I was absolutely nowhere near it. And it, it was a shame because I looked at Pete as well, and and we were both. Although he'd done really well at Wickham, gotten promoted when people like Paul Lambert couldn't, you yeah. know, 
he um he, he we were both kind of we looked at each other and thought you know that's kind of it you know mm. are you still involved in football now because at one point you were player manager up your end were you I, I tell you what I do now. I finished playing at Wickham and moved home and signed for Workington in Conference North, which was an absolute disaster <laughs> because yeah, when you when you go from being a full time pro to a part time pro, your your body, my body just couldn't take it. We were doing, I used to do a little bit every day, but as a part time, um, at a part time club, you do everything in one night. So my body was absolutely physically, I couldn't cope. Yeah. Um, I couldn't cope with. I would find myself in in an area, and the ball would take half a minute to get to me. And by the time it got to me, I'd be up in the air. So I, it was just a disaster. So what I done was, my local club Whitehaven um, asked me to be manager, and 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 I went there. And it, it was something that I'd, I mean, playing for the managers, that, managers and coaches that I played for, I'd gained so much knowledge and experience. I had to give it a go. It was something that I really wanted to yeah. do. Um, and I went down to Whitehaven and, and we made history in, in my one and only season I was there. Um, you know, we got to the County Cup final, lost to Carlisle. Um, the story behind that was Carlisle had played their youth team and reserve team every single round. But when they found out that it was Whitehaven and Stuart Green in the final, they played the first team because <laughs> they didn't want to lose. So I, I felt so... Honestly, we, we, we got to the final of the County Cup and it was at Carlisle. And I said to my lads, "We'll beat them." You know, they've my my lads were like, we were in step six, yeah, yeah. Um, which is quite low, but but we we were we were decent. And and I said to my lads, "We'll beat them." It's a reserve and youth team. We we've got no problems. And then I knew that I'd, I'd been told that there was no way that I was going back and winning a cup of Carlisle United. So they played the first team. So we got hammered. Um, and then I had a few years off. Start set up my own business. Um, where I teach football and PE in, in primary schools, which is absolutely brilliant, yeah. um, and I still do that now. And and then and then my other local team who are who are step six, they come in for me, um, and I went there for a year and got promoted for the first time in 110 years of their history. Got promoted to the next level, and we won the county cup um, in my in my one and only year there. And the only reason I stopped was um, to spend a little bit more time with my son who lives in London. Yeah. Um, but it's something that management and coaching, I think when you've, when you've played for the managers and listened to the managers that I have, it was just something that I had to do. Yeah, you just know? try your try around, chance your arm at it a bit and just see how it went. Kind of thing, and, yeah. and I, abs- and I absolutely loved it. And, and obviously you know, there's a chance that one day I could go back to my club where I got promoted, my local club, or I could go somewhere yeah. else. But, but I've you kind of you learn a lot from yourself as as you get older, and and I've kind of realised that if I am going to get back involved, it's got to be something where they they kind of have the ambition to get promoted. Or, yeah, you've got to see or, a long term like plan. I, I've, I've got to because I. I can't. I, I'm the type of person. I can't go somewhere to finish mid table. No. I'll get bored. I, I did as a player. Yeah. You know, I went to Blackpool and bottom of the championship, and I was bored. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I went to Wickham, and it was the same. And so, so now, if I go back, it's got to be a good project, or I just won't go yeah. back. You know. Um. But I think because obviously we're going to be talking into the night if we're not. Um, yeah, okay. it's, it's twenty past yeah, ten. Yeah. Taking up so much of your time for, for this, but I want, Stuart, thanks so much for joining us on uh, on the podcast. It's been amazing speaking to somebody again. That we say every every week we say this, but I still can't believe we're in a position where me and Richard you know, we speak to our childhood heroes every every week um, about the experiences that we had in the club and and all the memories that we've got. It's brilliant to go through them again, isn't it, Rich? Yeah, I have a huge privilege, Stuart. You know, like like Luke says, um, watching the teams that you were a part of, there was there was me, my dad, my brother, my granddad, and my sister. And we went every week. We went all over the country. So watching your teams was, you know, some of the best memories of of like my teenage years. 
so to speak to you and, and find out the stories behind it, it's it's a, an enormous privilege. So thank you no, for your listen, time. Thank you for having me on. I I never get I never get bored. I never get tired talking about horses. Neither do we. And, <laughs> and 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 I, and I and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why play, ex players like myself do this is and it's because we felt the love of of your supporters, mm. you know, and, and and it was a such an unbelievable connection. Um so thank you for having me on. Guys. No, that's great. Um I'm sure at some point in the future if we're still going, we'll always call on you again if you if, if once we uh we have football that's you know happening live again, which I don't know when that's gonna be. Um but mm. obviously when when June well yeah June we'll apparently that, we don't know really do mm. apparently. Apparently, um, yeah, we'll see. Thanks for thanks so much for your time, and I, and I hope to catch up again with you soon, Stu. It's been great. Any time, lads. Thank you very much. Take great care. Great stuff. Great Cheers. stuff. Cheers, um, the thanks best. a lot, guys. Um, we'll speak to you soon. We'd like to thank our guest today, Stuart Green. Um, his Twitter is at Stu Green nineteen eighty one. I think Rich tells me that's true. It um, is true. It is true. I checked it. I verified it. Um, blue tick. <laughs> blue tick. <laughs> Another good chat, wasn't it? Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. Um, Stuart was somebody that I enjoyed watching for City. Um, he was always my brother's favourite player. I think. <laughs> I think Rob always Rob always had the same boots that Stuart Green had, and, and I always and wanted why not? to. And why not? Yeah, I always wanted to be Ian Ashby. So you know, the Walker boys were. Uh, we were. Enamoured with Hull City's midfield around that time, yeah, we say. As, as we all were. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so obviously at Stuart, at Stuart Green, nineteen eighty one. Um, I'm, sh- I'm sure recently there's been a Tigers tube thing of him his best goals. There was a loop saw the other day. Yeah, yeah. Co- couple of great videos, oh, some yeah. cracking goals. Listen, listen. I don't think we asked him about it, but he's 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 won against Derby. His last goal for City. The technique on that was absolutely. Oh, well, fantastic. I meant to ask him about that, but I'm sure there'll be another time. Um, yeah. We, we could go for an hour oh, talking we could. about that. It was a brilliant goal. It was great, wasn't it? <laughs> um, and obviously, if you want to get involved with us, we've got um, at Tigers Tigers Podcast on Facebook and it's at Tigers Blah on Twitter. So obviously, any questions, um, anything comments, like that, comments. Abuse. Well, abuse, stories to share. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I mean, the, the amount of people that have got involved so far, there's been very little abuse, which has been quite nice, to be honest. Um, lots of people are very supportive of it, and it's still kind of. Yeah, it, we appreciate that. Yeah, it's, we it's nice to hear that you know people are enjoying it. Absolutely, yeah. I've got a massive fear of sounding like a couple of idiots, so it's nice to know that everybody's. Uh, I would class us yeah. as a couple of idiots, but I think there were probably idiots yeah, that people I tolerate because we. Get I don't want to sound them. like one. No, no, it's all right being one. I don't no. want to sound like no, one. That's true. <laughs> I suppose it's that. Um, but yeah, obviously, there's there's a lot of people that keep like adding us on Twitter and stuff and, and they say they're really enjoying the listening to mainly what the players have to say, not necessarily us. Um yeah, but, fair enough. I'll take that. So it's you know, it, it's it's good to hear that people are enjoying it and we're hopefully we're getting through lockdown easier than we would do otherwise. Um, yeah. so thank you very much for downloading. Keep sharing obviously far and wide and then I'm sure we'll speak to you soon. Go said it.